What's up, Facebook friends? Oh my gosh, I feel like it's been forever since I've been on here. So I wanted to pop on because I'm really excited. Um, we actually just had a team call um, and I, <sighs> I mean, I'm just so fired up after after this call um, because, I mean, here's the thing. Like, there are a lot of who are in network marketing um, or direct sales, and they kind of feel like they're flailing around, not successful, uh, have never really hit that home run kind of feeling. So we had our team call, and I have – we have a team call every Monday, but um, – uh, I invited a very special guest, she's a friend of mine, um, to come on and train our team. And uh, hey guys, and she has earned over $10 million in commissions. Um, and it's been five and a half years. Okay, so I wanted to come on here outside of the team page because I know a lot of you guys watch and you share these with your teams and all of that which i totally appreciate um and i want to kind of give you some of the nuggets that i picked up from this team call it was it was just seriously so good like some of it when i was sitting there listening i was taking some notes i was like oh my gosh i really wish i had i wish that i had live streamed it you know, because I want you guys to get this kind of information. So anyways, if you are catching me on replay, type replay um, below so I can pop back in and say hi to you guys. If you're catching me on live, say hi. Facebook is not showing like who's watching. I can see the number, but I can't see names until you say something. I don't know if that's a new Facebook thing. It's been a while since I've actually been on Facebook live. Um, hey, Brittany. Okay, cool. There you are. So um, I am a little bit... Uh, like my brain feels like scrambled eggs right now. Um, if you watch my stories at all, which I hope you do, I'm on Instagram stories and on Facebook stories. Um, my husband just bought me the, um, pink MacBook Air. Um, I know Apple people, it's not pink, it's gold. But here's the deal. Why, why do they call it gold when it's clearly pink? It's like as pink as my lips. I don't understand why Apple calls it gold. That makes no sense to me. We almost like went back and forth in the Apple store. Like, well, I don't understand why they call it gold. It's clearly pink. Anyway, so my brain is a little bit like scrambled eggs because I am learning how to use a Mac computer and I feel like such a noob. I honestly feel kind of stupid. I've had iPhone forever, but Mac is completely different. I mean, there's no right clicking. I don't understand the whole concept. So. This kind of relates to the video that I want to do for you guys because this is one of those things that if you're in network marketing, if you're in direct sales, actually, if you're an entrepreneur at all, maybe you have a brick and mortar business, maybe you're starting up some digital digital company, right, where you offer something that's outside of the network marketing space, here's the thing. This is going to be so valuable for you if you are an entrepreneur in any kind of way whatsoever and if you're a parent because... You probably, if you're a parent, you've probably got kids in sports, um, maybe in band. I really want you guys to share this out. Hey, Bonnie. Hey, guys. Because this is not company specific, okay? Um, but it will inspire you and your team. Because when you learn lessons from someone who has earned more than $10 million in under five and a half years in their company, in any kind of business, to be honest, <laughs> you can pull lessons from that, right? So I kind of relate things like I'm a very, um, I don't know, I kind of go inward and I'm very philosophical and whatever, right? Um, but I was taking notes like a mad person and I really wanted to come on here and share these things with you. So first and foremost, this person that I had on my team call, um, she spent... 50 minutes with us and just answering questions and like live coaching our team. It was so, so good. Um, first and foremost, I want to share, she is not an influencer. You've never heard her name before, unless you're like in our company. You've never heard her name before. She's not like super popular. She doesn't have digital marketing courses and like author of books and she doesn't do like these free webinars to get you into her funnels. She's not, you, you've never seen her on a generic training stage. You don't know her name, most likely. Okay, she's not an influencer in that space. She also did not get in her company early. Okay, so timing was not a thing. This was not like she was one of the first to join founding member who get in at the ground floor. None of that stuff matters. Newsflash, none of that stuff matters. I've been in at the ground floor. I've also been in late to the party 
None of that matters. I'm gonna give you guys five things that I picked up from this 50 minute conversation. Um, and I'm gonna condense down to what I feel like are the most important five things that you need to take and share this with your people. So here's the thing, here's for those of us on Facebook and social media, YouTube, if you have people who follow you, they're following you, most likely either your, they're your actual friends and family or they're following you because they're interested in the business, right? And they're following you because you're an influencer in that space. When you share valuable content out to the people who you who follow you, that's really providing value to them. So comment below if you hit share um, so I can come back and tell you thank you. I really do appreciate that stuff. So here's the thing. So this woman that I interviewed um, in our team huddle, I gave her basically 30 minutes to just riff, right? Like tell us what we need to know. Um, she didn't, didn't even go into her background, her story, <clears throat> but when she started in her network marketing business, she started um, as a very busy mom, okay? Four kids, two of whom were at the time three-year-old twin boys, like dude, could y'all imagine? Um, like all of them in sports, <laughs> all of that, okay? She worked eight to five, so it's not like she was a stay-at-home mom sitting there watching soaps with nothing to do, no. Very busy mom. Busy kids, busy life, busy full-time job. In fact, such a kind of job where it wasn't like a desk type job. She was literally going between patient to patient to patient, always running around, always doing something, always visiting patients, that kind of thing. It was not like one of those things where she could sit at a desk and type Facebook messages all day. She had literally no time to do any of that stuff. She found a product that she really loved. Her friend offered it to her and said, you know, hey, as a busy mom, you really need to take this product. It'll help you, da, da, da. Um, and she was pretty much sold. Like she, I really want the product. Yes, I know it'll help me. I've read all the stories. I've, I've heard the buzz going around about this product, right? Um, but she couldn't afford it, right? So how many of you have ever been in a position where you yourself, maybe you wanted to do something, you saw the value in it, but you couldn't financially like make that happen? Or maybe you're in network marketing and you're in a leadership position and you're in that position where you know what you have, but someone who needs it and who wants it, what you have to offer can't afford it at the moment, right? So the problem that a lot of people in network marketing have is that we tend to get so stuck on the one person or the four people or the 48 people <laughs> who say no, who blow us off, who ghost us, who can't afford it at the time, right? And we kind of just stop there where we're like, well, they can't afford it. Now, there are some people who they're gonna stay stuck because they're gonna stay stuck, right? Like there's just some people who they're gonna complain about being broke and they complain about being overweight and they complain about not feeling good, but they've been complaining about that for like 10 years, you know what I mean? So they're not, you know, they say they wanna change stuff, but like, do they really though? Probably not. But there's some people who are just, they're freaking sick and tired of complaining about the same crap all the time. They're tired of being broke, they're tired of being overweight, and they're actually finally willing to do something about it. That was my friend. So finally, she kind of got to that position where she was like, all right, <laughs> enough is enough. I got four kids, I got a husband that's all like traveling all the time, I'm working like nonstop, um, eight to five, like I got no money and I'm over it over it like it was like t coming up on the holidays like we are right now um and maybe you're stressed out you don't know how to make like christmas or the holidays happen for your family maybe you want to send gifts to like friends and like non-immediate family but you just can't like your heart is generous but your bank account's like no girl <laughs> no we're not um and it's it's hard that sucks right so she was in a position like that where she couldn't even afford to take the products she couldn't even afford to order the products. So her friend, and I don't care what company you're with, this will apply. Her friend said, you know what? I feel like you deserve better and you really deserve this product. So here's what I'm gonna do. So our product is a three-step like a regimen, like a system. And here's the thing. So like whatever business, whatever products you're in, okay? figure out something to give that person just like just like right before you get ready to ride a horse right like there's a person that's going to stand there next to the saddle and it's like put your foot in here and i'll give you a leg up can you give anyone 
on your contact list, the person that you've been building a relationship with, the person that needs you to believe in them enough to give them a leg up. Can you put your hands out and say, put your foot here and I will give you a leg up. So this girl, her friend who actually wound up sponsoring her, gave her one of the steps of our three step system. It's a $50 pack of patches, right? So she gave her that product and said, but it's on the contingency where you have to order step one and step two. Like you gotta put some skin in the game. Let me tell you this right now. Those of you who are network marketing, direct sales, do not pay for other people's stuff, like just outright, like for everything. They have to have some kind of skin in the game. Because very much like your kids, if you give your kids literally everything, the moon and the stars, and you spoil them rotten, you feel good, because that's what you're doing. You're like, oh, look at me, I feel so good. I'm such a good mom, right? But what it actually does is it creates a sense of entitlement when your kids and also your team or your friends, when they don't feel like they earned that, they got that, they did some of it themselves, right? So always try to make them feel like they're doing the most of it. You're just giving them a leg up, just like riding a horse, right? So what she did is she said, okay, you buy step one and step two, it's like $140. I'll give you step three, which is 50 bucks. Okay, so she did the majority of the legwork, right? $50 investment for that person's leg up, okay? Five and a half years later, she went from not even being able to afford under $200 worth of products, which she could have gotten for free with two referrals, to five and a half years later, five and a half years later being on stage receiving an eight figure award earner little trophy thing that means y'all if y'all don't know what eight figures is that means she had earned over 10 million dollars in commissions actually not not sales not volume not her team her commissions in her bank account 10 million dollars five and a half years i'm not saying that's going to happen to you i'm just saying what if what if her friend had said, you know what, she's gonna stay stuck forever. I might as well not even offer her any kind of leg up. You know, she's just gonna stay stuck. You know, maybe I'll just forget to follow up with her. How many people have you forgotten to follow up with lately? Like how many people have you not written their name down somewhere on your calendar? How many people have you not messaged back? How many people have you had in your mind or on your heart? I should really reach out to that person but you don't, why? Because maybe you're afraid to, maybe because they tell you no, maybe because you don't wanna look silly. You don't wanna get told no. Your fear of rejection is keeping you held back, but it's also holding back that other person. What if, like this is where my mind goes, what if she had in a temporary moment of selfishness not reached back out to her friend and said, you know what, I have an extra package of these patches would you be open to, or you make it happen. I want you to make this work. You order this and this, I'll give you this, and we'll launch your business together, and we'll see where it goes. What if she hadn't have done that? I mean, like, dude, let's talk about investments for a second. Do y'all think like a $50 investment? What if you sponsored someone in your business right now, and you made a $50 investment? Now, like we earn our products for free, so really it's a $50 value, but she probably had them in her cabinet because they were free products. But still, what if you invested $50 into somebody, and then in your business, in your actual business, what if you sponsor somebody and you gave them $50 as an incentive, as a free product or whatever, and five and a half years later, you're sitting in the audience as your person, your friend, goes up on stage to receive an award for earning over $10 million in commissions, like $50 million, $60 million in sales volume a month, and that's in your network. Dude, like that freaks me out sometimes of how many times I personally have thought, "Mm, I mean, if they wanted it, they'd message me. You know, if they really wanted to do it, they'd get back to me. Um, you know, I sit there and think that sometimes, like I have a lot of people who have expressed interest, like a ton of you guys message me. Right. Um, and I have a ton and like, sometimes I have to like take a deep breath and get over myself to like reach back out and follow up and circle back and like all of those things. Because what if you tell me no, what if you blow me off? What if you worse, what if you read my message and then don't reply? Like, right. 
So I just think like, what if the person that I am not messaging back or following up with, or like that I've had on my heart to reach out to, what if I blow him off and that's that person? Because here's the ripple effect side of that, of why you need to get over yourself and reach out even though you're scared to, is because it's not about the $10 million that she's earned, although that's amazing, right? Um, the, she has been able to fund orphanages, give gifts to orphans. Um, she's done a lot of really huge things that she doesn't even publicize. Good for the world, good for third world countries, good for homeless. I mean, she's creating literally a legacy within her own family for generations to come. She's able to do big things in the world. Um, because of that money. Money is just a tool. Money is not something that it's like some goal or trophy or whatever. You want and need to make a crap ton of money because with that money, you are able to make a bigger impact. Who cares? Like if, if money's not a big deal to you and you don't really need money, you don't really like money, you don't really care about money, okay, Make all the money that you can. Work your freaking tail off to make the extra money that you can. Because if you're that type of person where you don't personally need it yourself, pay it forward. Create a ripple effect. Create change. Give it to others. Like you guys, stop holding your own self back from making a ton of money because you feel like that's selfish or someone somewhere in your life told you you're not worthy you shouldn't make money M making money is greedy being wealthy is awful wherever that story came from like close that chapter and throw it away because making money Money brings out more of what you already are some people turn into total jerk faces when they start making a ton of money but guess what? It wasn't the money that did it. <laughs> Some people turn into the most generous, incredible people who can bless people's faces off anonymously. And money didn't turn them into that either. Money magnifies what you already are. So if you have that kind of heart and you're like, I, I want to, if I had $10 million in the last five years, here's what I would do. Here's what I would spend that on. Like, what would you do? I'd actually love to know that. Like, type below. If you had $10 million over the next five years to you, like $10 million in your bank account in the next five years, what would you do? Like obviously pay off debt, pay off your car, like all that kind of stuff, right? You'd probably give some to your family. You'd probably set up like college tuition funds or whatever for like everybody. <laughs> like you'll have like an Oprah moment, okay? Like you get a car and I'm gonna pay off your house. You'll, you'll have that kind of stuff, I'm sure. But what would you really do with it? What kind of things do you care about? Where would you spend that money? So as you guys think about that, here is the five things that I learned from this call. And one of them is gonna shock you. It's so unconventional. Like we go to a lot of network marketing trainings. Um, I personally have spoken on Eric Worre's stage twice. Um, big stage, 5,000 people, 100,000 live stream, big stage. Like my name was up there in lights and all that kind of stuff. This is stuff that's not talked about. So when she was on my team huddle call and I'm kind of listening to her and I was like, oh my gosh, like no one, no one at the two main events that I spoke at shared this one thing that's very untraditional. Um, okay, so the first one is keep the main thing the main thing. So one of the things that really surprised me was, you know, for her and someone at her level has earned over $10 million, right? Lots of awards, literally bazillions of people in their team, <laughs> in her team. She is always focused on keeping the main thing, the main thing. And for our company, the main thing is getting people on the product. Um, and that for her is the getting the people, serving the people, what do they need? You know, who are they? What are their needs? Keeping the main thing, the main thing. In network marketing, especially as you level up, um, especially as your team grows, I've seen this both in the corporate side and on the field side, it's really easy to let your focus shift, right? So <clears throat> if you just like write it on a sticky note, y'all, 
keep the main thing the main thing. Why did you start that in the first place? Why did you why did you join your business? What lit you up enough to make you hit that button to start, to launch? If you're a brick and mortar business owner, what lit you up and excited you enough to actually go forward with whatever paperwork and whatever you had to do to launch that business? Why did you do that? Whatever that reason is, keep the main thing the main thing because as leaders when you start to build a team and this I've seen this happen I've seen this happen with people who when they just have a handful of team members maybe they have like three customers and two team members and all of a sudden <laughs> they're all of a sudden like in management mode oh my team will sell stuff and my customers will stay on forever and and then all of a sudden you never see them posting about their product. You never see them following up anymore. They're not doing the same thing that they did in the beginning, right? So stay focused on what you have. The main thing, the main objective, whatever lights that fire in your belly, keep the main thing, the main thing. Number two, and this is where like I almost started to cry. Number two was stay consistent. And this is, this is heartbreaking to a certain extent because I watch a lot of people in network marketing. I am friends with a lot of you guys and a lot of you guys are in a lot of different companies. And something that I notice within my own company as well as outside is that people call it like shiny object syndrome, squirrel, whatever, whatever you want to call it is you're on fire for like a brief moment. Um, whether that's a week, whether that's a month, it could be a year. And all of a sudden, like you're not posting about your product anymore. You're not excited about your business anymore. Um, you're not hosting calls anymore. <laughs> you're not showing up anymore. Um, you're not even like engaging in your team's pages anymore. You're not like reaching out and like giving gifts and incentives and all this fun stuff that everybody was drawn to in the beginning. You're not doing that stuff anymore. And so what really like blessed my face off on this call is that um, in front of my whole team, which makes it even more special, in front of my whole team, she told my team, I was literally one of the most consistent people in our entire company um, and her whole team is that over the past four years that I've been with my company, I, I've just, I don't let my foot off the gas. Our business has gone like this, bleh, like if you've got like motion sickness, like buckle up, baby. Like it's a roller coaster. I tell you guys that all the time, right? Any network marketing business, if you do it well enough, long enough, it's gonna be a roller coaster. Your business will correct itself. You're gonna fly way up and then it's gonna correct itself and then you're gonna fly way up. It's momentum and it's ebb and flow. That's normal and it's normal in any business. If you listen to Gary Vaynerchuk, he will tell you the exact same thing. I don't care what business you have. It's not a network marketing thing. It's not that your company sucks. It's not that your product isn't working. It's not any of that BS that we tell ourselves. It, a lot of it has to do with you. How big are you showing up and are you being consistent? Consistency is everything. If you let your foot off the gas for like six months, I promise you, 100%, no doubt, your income will go down. <laughs> it just, I don't care how great your product is, I don't care how sturdy your team is, it's just business that just is business like if Gary Vaynerchuk ghosted Instagram and was not posting about his ventures or wine or VaynerMedia or TikTok or whatever if he stopped showing up he would become irrelevant does that matter does that mean that no one likes wine anymore no one's interested in social media marketing anymore no what that means is that he has become irrelevant and when you're inconsistent that breeds doubt into people's minds that we're watching you. So people are watching you, including your team right now. People are watching you, including your upline right now. People are watching you, well, in my case, I was watching my sponsor for almost two years. <laughs> Why? It wasn't that I was like unsure of anything. I knew I wanted the whole enchilada when I said yes to a company. I wanted the sponsor. I wanted the team, I wanted the product, I wanted the comp plan, I wanted the marketing, I wanted the duplication, I wanted the culture, I wanted the whole shebang. So I stalked her to be sure that I was sure that I was sure. There are people right now doing that. They're stalking you to see, 
are you gonna be like 90%, that's a shocking statistic, I know, but 90% of people or more in network marketing fail. You see that stat all the time from like network marketing haters and they're like, well, 95% of people don't make money in network marketing. Well, duh, dude, because 95% of people quit. <laughs> like before they even start anything. Most restaurants fail in the first five years. Most brick and mortar businesses close in the first five years. Y'all, starting a business is hard. Starting a business with like very little investment, very little startup, dude, it's easy to do a business like this, but that means that it's also like, you don't have very much skin in the game. So it's really easy to quit when you just don't feel like it, when you don't want the rejection, when you're like, nah, I mean, is it really worth like, you know, trying and putting myself out there and whatever? Because you're not gonna see like an immediate, there is no get rich quick thing. Like if somebody tries to sell you on that, please just don't like block them. Um, Cause that doesn't happen. It's going to be a slow process in the beginning and you build up and you build up, but the consistency is where it like has this compound effect where it's going to pay off, okay? But if you're not consistent and you stop posting and you stop showing up, I promise you, like you're gonna wonder like, wow, why isn't anyone signing up with me? Go back through maybe your posts and your messages and your call logs to see how many reach outs you did and how many follow ups you did. Go back and really be honest with yourself, like give yourself an audit and see if the numbers that you're, that, that are coming in, that you're personally onboarding, see if that correlates at all with the amount of reach outs, follow ups, and presence that you've got. When I show up big, my numbers are big, my personal numbers, I'm not talking about my team, me personally, because I'm not gonna ask my team ever, I tell them this all the time, if I ask my team to do something, or I'm like, hey guys, let's do this challenge, I promise you it's because I'm doing it. I will never ask my team to do something I'm not already doing. They can check my Facebook and I tell them to, you go stalk my page and see how many times I post. <laughs> like, right? So if you like do an audit, a lot of times it'll go like this. Your numbers climb as your presence climbs, as your follow-ups climb, as your reach outs climb. And when you start tanking, that's when your numbers will tank too. So number two is consistency. Number three, is focus on the relationships. Okay, so um, one of our team members asked her, like, do you do cold messaging and stuff like that? Now, I know some companies, possibly your leaders, your companies, um, some people teach this method. Okay, so like actually when we were, when I was speaking at Eric Worre's event uh, in 2017, um, it was actually somebody on stage was teaching people how to do cold messages. <laughs> Like how to send a friend request and say, hey, I noticed that we have some friends in common. Would you be open to blah, 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 blah. Like that whole spiel that everybody's heard like 9,000 times. I don't teach that. I don't like that. I don't approve of that message, but it works for some people. Okay. Um, so that is what a lot of people are learning right now out there in the network marketing land is um, how to like cold message people and be spammy, pammy. You know what I mean? Um, sorry to all the pams out there, but we don't teach that. So um, she answered his question with, it's not, the goal is to, yes, you want to make new friends and, and build relationships. So like, yes, she's talking to people she doesn't know. So that is a cold relationship, okay? So like if you're in a Facebook group, for example, you're in a Facebook group with like mutual interests, um, maybe you've got um, a child with type one diabetes, okay? And you're in a Facebook group with other parents who have children with type one diabetes. You have something in common. Now, one method that is taught from a lot of stages, y'all, and a lot of these gurus that some people buy courses and stuff from are teaching this nonsense, please, please. Some people will say, uh, like their comment, like their post, um, go to their profile, like their profile picture, send them a friend request, and immediately jump into their inbox and be like, Hey, so-and-so, I'm in the same Facebook group you are and we have some mutual friends. And I was just wondering if I could show you a way to make money from home without interrupting what you're already doing, would you be open to taking a look? Like that's literally a script. <laughs> and most people hate network marketing when they get a message like that. Most people who are at least somewhat mm, social savvy, which is honestly who you're trying to attract, I'm guessing, most people are like, oh man, like, 
could you have just not done it like that, right? Like it's just a huge turnoff of what could have been a great person. But when you open up with a can of whatever spam like that, it's not, it's not good. It's no bueno. So her answer, her response to that is yes, I build relationships. Yes. I connect with people who are cold. Okay. So like in those groups, um, and we have a whole, we have a whole training coming for our team on how to convert from cold to lukewarm to hot. <laughs> uh, it's like a thermometer. It's going to be really cute. Um, anyway, so there is a whole process, right? And it doesn't take very long to convert somebody from a cold, I don't know you, you don't know me, to warm, now I kind of know you and I kind of like you, to being hot, now I trust you, I trust you. So her number three was focus on the relationships. Bring them from cold to hot, how do you do that? You go from the know, like, and trust. The faster you do that, it comes with practice. It comes with heart. Um, it comes with the mindset of I want to serve. Um, all of that, right? And honestly, it's going to be like like in the beginning of this video, I was telling you guys I got a Mac. Um, I got a MacBook Air. It's pink. It's gold, but it's it's pink. Um, and I feel I feel like a newborn baby deer trying to walk on ice, y'all. I feel clumsy and dumb and awkward, and I'm trying to right click on a one button mouse. I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me. My brain is like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. It makes zero sense. In network marketing, when you start doing this this way, when you start building relationships and going from cold to warm to hot, no like and trust it's gonna feel like that it's gonna feel like the first time you ever drove a stick shift it's gonna feel like the first time you ever went on a date first time you ever tried to french kiss somebody it's gonna be sloppy and gross and messy and you're probably gonna hate it and never want to do it again but <laughs> you probably realize this is the way you this is something you have to learn how to do right so the more you do it consistently keeping the main thing the main thing, the more proficient you will be, the more natural it will be. You know, some people are always like, oh my gosh, how do you message so fluidly? And how do you respond like that? And how are you such a wordsmith? And oh, you so great on live video. Dude, listen, the first few times I was doing any of that stuff, I was terrible. Like sometimes I go back through some of the messages that I sent to people early, early on. Um, and I have to like straight up like apologize. I am so sorry for messaging you that like with an up arrow. Like that is super embarrassing. I was clearly not in my right mind. I am so sorry. Can I have a do over? I literally say that to people. First of all, that's being real. Like now you're a real person who screws up sometimes, but you care enough about that person to circle back around, to humble yourself and say, I was kind of a dork, <laughs> overly excited, did it the wrong way. Now I know a better way. Can I get a do over? Can you forgive me for coming across so weird, right? If you have messages like that, don't skip that person. What if that person needs you to share because they have big things that they want to do for this world? What if you are the catalyst for that? What if you are the ripple effect they've been waiting on? If you skip them, that whole section of life changing things for the world might skip too. So don't skip it. Humble yourself and be like, I just, I just need to do over. I was dumb and I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't have training yet, <laughs> right? People will probably LOL, no big deal. That's exactly what they'll say, I promise you. Most people will be like, LOL, it's no big deal. And then just start over. How have things been going for you? What's new in your world? Like toss the ball back over the net to them, y'all, okay? Number four, be intentional and plan your work. Now this was a big aha moment for me. Um, because for her, listen, for five and a half years, okay, over five and a half years, she has, or in under five and a half years, she has earned over $10 million in commissions. We get paid every Tuesday here. So can you imagine, like, do the division? What is her check? Like, seriously, it's mind blowing. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people on our team were like, well, did you start with this? And did you do this? And what book did you read? And what podcast do you listen to? And all this kind of stuff. Y'all, in the very beginning, she was very, um, I don't want to say broke, broke as a mindset. She was, she was like living literally paycheck to paycheck and, and like less than, 
<laughs> she didn't have enough money for the month, right? If any of you can relate. So what she had to do is because she also had four kids, she still has four kids. Two of them are, tw are twins. Twin boys at the time, they were three at the time. Can you imagine like one three-year-old is like a lot. Two three-year-old twin boys, like I can't even. Um, and she worked full time, eight to five. Her husband was very busy as well, traveled a lot, oil fields, all that kind of stuff. So, and her job, her full-time job was seeing patients like during her day. It wasn't like she had a desk job where she could just like be on Facebook or on the phone all day long, right? She was like literally clipboard running from patient to patient to patient to patient. She had about five to 10 minutes between each patient. So one of the things that she shared that I wanted to pass on to you guys is you have to be really intentional and plan out your work. We all have the same 24 hours a day. On average, most people get between six to eight hours of sleep a night. So you do the math of how much actual awake time where your eyeballs are open during the day. You have the same amount of time as Beyonce. You have the same amount of time as Rachel Hollis. You have the same amount of time as anybody. <laughs> Okay, all these people who are doing all these awesome, big, huge, crazy things, they all have the same amount of time. The difference is that what I learned from her is that she's very intentional with her time and she planned out her work. So she's focused in the beginning, she focused solely on income producing activities. Y'all need to write that down and share this with your team. There are a lot of people some of you may be watching. There are a lot of people in network marketing who grow their business on social media, like me. I used to do home parties. That was, you know, back in the day before social media was a thing, doing home parties, it was really easy to be intentional with your time. You book a party, you spend like two and a half hours, three hours at a party in someone's living room, no phones, no social medias, no distractions. You're focused on getting people to order your product and or joining your team and or referring others. One, two, or three, which one is it gonna be, right? Very intentional actions. With social media, it's been a blessing and also a distraction. You can grow a global business nowadays on your phone through social media. I have, a lot of other people have, full-time income, social media, free platform, right? However, a lot of you and probably your team are thinking that you're working, <laughs> and being intentional and thinking that you're prospecting and thinking that you're recruiting when in actuality you're just scrolling and liking scrolling and liking you're not being intentional with your reach outs you're not being intentional with what you post a very strategic post you're not being intentional and in planning out your time here's the thing and I teach this um, a lot is time blocking your calendar if you have a family if you have important commitments Put it on your calendar, dentist appointment, lunch with husband, uh, homework with kids, plan out your calendar. It is very interesting to me how many people come to me and say, but Laura, I literally have no time to build a business. No time. I got two kids and my husband works and I work and we have no time ever. However, when they allow me to, when they allow me permission to audit <laughs> their time, which I do sometimes, um, they have a lot of time. It's just that their time is being consumed by scrolling Facebook or watching Netflix. Look, I'm, I'm not against TV. I am not one of those like, oh, if you wanna really build your business, throw away your TV out. That's stupid in my opinion. I'm sorry, I think that is lame-o and stupid-o. I like watching movies. I like watching shows with my husband, I, but be intentional with that time. Block it out. It is literally, I sound stupid, but it's literally on my calendar of the shows that we like to watch together. For us, it's kind of like date night in. That is critical for my marriage. Our relationship, we've been together for 28 years, married for 25. You want to know how our relationship is rock solid? It's because I plan time and we plan time for each other that is not negotiable, right? So if that's watching a movie with your spouse or helping your kids with your homework, their homework or going to their sports games or whatever, be present. But you have to be intentional about it. So plan out your work. What are the actual income producing activities that you should be doing in your business? Income producing activities is not engaging in people's posts who are already ordering your products or already on your team. 
okay? That's nurturing. That's That should be a part of your calendar that is nurturing the business you've already received, but that is not income producing, like new business. That's not income producing. Income producing is prospecting, reaching out, following up, getting a new customer on board, helping that customer refer people so that if your company has some kind of referral program or whatever, um, helping a new promoter launch their business, helping a new promoter, like who can we talk to today? Who can you introduce me to in a Facebook chat? Whatever. Those are income producing activities. Uh, liking your uplines post is nice, but that's not income producing activity, right? So like block out 30 minutes to do those nurturing type things. Um, but the other big, huge blocks of your time better be intentional and you need to plan your work. So for our team, we actually have um, a cool little, like every week we do prize drawings for this. It's a fun little challenge. It's like the honor system, but we call it five, four, three, two, one. So it's basically where you reach out to a certain amount of people, you follow up a certain amount of people, you make a, fa a social media post. Like it's literally, we tell them exactly what to do every single day and they tally up their points and they can enter to win stuff, right? Have something like that for yourself. Do not depend on your upline, your team, like to spoon feed you this kind of stuff. If you need to be more intentional, you say, okay, this is the thing that I need to do every single day. These are the five most important things I need to do to move the needle in my business every single day. And these are non-negotiables. I'm gonna put them on my calendar as if somebody's gonna pay me $10 million to do these things. Cause here's the reality. What if, you do these things consistently and in the next five and a half years, you go from zero to hero in your business. What if over the next five and a half years, you start a decision like today, I watched that video and I'm making a decision like today, I'm gonna start over, I'm gonna do it the right way. And today, five and a half years from today, you're on a stage because you have earned $10 million in your business, right? So do those income producing activities, do the 54321, do those things as if, obviously you're not gonna get guaranteed income, right? Like don't be silly, but go with that intention, go with that like excitement of, oh, if I do this, like $10 million, go do it as if you're gonna earn $10 million. Like, cause I promise you, <laughs> here's why I, I, I'm not mean, so I didn't say this, but if, I could have, <clears throat> I would have told that person who said, I have two kids, my husband works and I work and I have no time to build a business, no time to build a business, which seriously, um, I, what I want to ask, if that's you, if you feel that way, ask yourself this question. If someone paid you a million dollars to go figure out your calendar to make it happen, <laughs> to create more time, like an hour, I don't know, an hour a day to work your business intentionally. Would you do it? If somebody gave you a million dollars a year, that's half of what this girl has earned. A million dollars a year for the next five years. If you would just carve out like an hour or two to be intentionally working your business, doing income producing activities, could you figure it out? Could you? I bet you could. I could. Dude, I'm busy, but like, I'll figure it out, <laughs> right? I'll take shorter showers. Like I'll get some dry shampoo. I'll like, we'll figure it out, right? All right, so number five, and this is, this is the one that I thought was pretty unconventional um, that I've never heard. Like I said, I've, I've spoken on big stages and all of those things. And I've, I've never, I've talked to a lot of top leaders and a lot of different companies. Like that used to be my actual job was to get in the thick of things and peek behind the curtain and all of those things. And I have never heard somebody phrase it this way where she actually, now you would think she's, she's I think she's the number one income earner in our company. She has the largest team. Um, I mean, it's mind blowing. A lot of people assume that she teaches those of us that are on her team to lead with the business. And I, I, I probably would get some hate mail for this. Um, from some of you guys that do trainings and stuff, but one of the things that I know about the way she teaches our team and that it's a ripple effect, right? We teach our own teams this, <clears throat> is that she leads with the product. So like if you're in a service-based company, she leads with the service, lead with the product first, then introduce the business. So here's the thing, like a lot of people flip this 
Okay, thank you, Jessie Lee. So a lot of people flip this and they're like, ooh, I wanna recruit a bunch of people because then those people are gonna go recruit people and those people are gonna go, and they, they think like big money, they think like dollar signs and stuff. But here's the reality, you guys. Happy customers turn into incredible promoters. <laughs> Period, end stop, the end. Like, get people on your product or your service. Get them to believe in what you are offering. Get them to subscribe to what you are selling. Because when they are convinced that the product works, you have done the hardest part of the whole network marketing game is to help people get the product into their hands. When they do and your product shows up, that's a pretty big piece, but when your product shows up and they're happy customers, the, the flip to flip them to promoter who's actually going to run the business, guess what they already have that's the number one most unconventional training you're ever gonna get the number one most important thing that a successful person needs in network marketing is that fire in their belly. There is no convincing you that your product doesn't work. No one can come at you and saying, oh, it gave me a headache, it made me sick. Oh, it's like causing blah, blah, blah. No, nope, nope, it doesn't. You are so on fire that you have created this, this momentum and this spark that is gonna create this massive bonfire with people just so excited about your product and it is so much easier to flip someone who's a happy, satisfied customer into a promoter that's on fire. Because when they have belief and they've got that fire in their belly, now it's just a matter of training them and giving them a little bit of like getting started, giving them that leg up, right? Like helping them board the horse <laughs> and teach them how to go. They already have the belief, they already have the excitement. So the last thing that she was sharing with us is you have got to get out of your head. Your head is where when you start your business, you're not in your head, most likely. When you launched your business, when you hit that button, when you started this whole thing, you were not in your head. You were not thinking, most likely, some of you probably are, but most of you are not thinking dollar signs, levels, trips, um, <clears throat> rank advancements and recognition and trophies and awards. You're not thinking that stuff. When you first hit that button, you are thinking here with your heart. You're thinking, I love this product. This product can change lives. I gotta share this with people or I'm a crappy friend. <laughs> like, if you have somebody who started as a customer, that's how they're starting. Their story starts with, listen, I was just a customer, I consumed the product first, I fell in love with it, and it just made sense for me to hit the button and share it with people. And if I'm gonna share it with people, I might as well get paid. That's it, right? So her message that I wanna pass along to you is get out of your head, get back into your heart, and stop overthinking it. There, the beauty of social media is that we have a lot of training on, you know, like y'all are listening to me go for 50 minutes on this training, right? You can consume a lot of training. You can go on YouTube and consume a lot of training. You can ask your top leaders, what books are you reading? And you can listen to podcasts and you can do all of these things. You can consume and consume until you get so fat with knowledge. It's not that that's going to grow your business. It's not, it is what you decide to actually implement and what you take action on. That is where people get stuck. There's a lot of really smart people who know a lot about network marketing. There's a lot, there's a lot of trainers and gurus out there that have not done jack crap in their businesses. Sorry, not sorry, but there's a lot of them. <laughs> the reality is that you have to not let yourself get in the position where you're consuming so much that now, you're overthinking it. Well, was that podcast right? Should I do this? Or, but I read in that book that I should really do it this way. And well, this script says, well, would you be open to taking a look if it didn't interfere with what you're already doing? And like, you have all this noise in your head and now you're overthinking it that when the time you look at the calendar, well, I gotta go pick up the kids from school and I haven't done anything <laughs> in my business. So my message to you guys is keep it simple. Keep the main thing, the main thing. Stay consistent. Focus on the relationships first, not the, 
scripts and the spam and all that kind of stuff. Be intentional, plan out your work and get out of your head, get into your heart. I call it the heart and hustle. You've got to have a good combination of both. You've got to have the big, huge heart that wants to serve and help other people and grow and bless the world with the money that you can make. But the reality is that the hustle side of it you have to actually take action and stop overthinking it. So with that, I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching my videos. If you caught this on replay, type replay below. If you caught me on live, just say hi. I'll come back and say hi to you guys. If you have any questions, let me know, and I will see you guys on another video. Love you all. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.